not often that I get to combine my passion for theology and bicycling together, but today is an exception. What I wanted to do today is tell you about Madonna del Gisalo, the patron saint of bicyclists. The story, the history, and the relevance behind this chapel and church. Quick disclaimer here right at the start. I am not Catholic, and I'm going to be talking about a Catholic church and apparition of the Virgin Mary. So if I get a few things wrong here, please excuse me. I'm trying to convey this as faithfully as I can as a Christian and encouragement for others. The sanctuary for the Madonna de Gis Gisalo, Gisalo, I'm gonna have a problem saying that today. The sanctuary for Madonna de Gisalo is in the Lake Como region of Italy, about 40 miles north of Milan. And it's situated at the top of about a seven mile hill climb to a pass. So why is this little sanctuary situated way up there. The important thing that we need to understand is the role and the importance of shrines, chapels, and churches along travel routes before the 1800s. We live in a 60 mile per hour world. And even though the most dangerous thing we can do on a daily basis is travel by car, it is still one of the safest means of transportation we've ever had in human history. If we went back to the 1600s, we need to realize that they lived in a three mile per hour world, how fast you walked on average. An average person probably never traveled more than 20 miles from their house, except for rare occasions. Not only was travel slow from our perspective, but it could be extremely dangerous. You had dangers from wild animals, bandits on the road, and the greatest danger of all was the weather. Now the road I'm going up today, high drive, would have been considered a super luxury road back then. It's wide, it's graded well, there's not a lot of ruts in it, and it holds a pretty steady gradient the whole way. There's no like super steep sections, even though it is quite a grunt to get up this. I decided to shoot this video on this road because this is about as close as I could think of getting to Italy. I just don't have the money to fly to Italy for a couple days. Use your imagination and just imagine that I'm in the Lake Como region of Italy right now. If you're in a mountainous region, you need to consider the greatest danger possible, the weather. Weather in the mountains can change in a matter of minutes. And if you're traveling on foot, you don't have the luxury of rolling up the windows or turning on the heat in your car. You bundled up with whatever you were carrying or sought shelter, prayed for protection, or did all three. Now there's two stories behind the founding of the sanctuary of the Madonna de Gelasio. Now in the one story, him and his party are crossing over the pass and they get waylaid by bandits. And he seeks sanctuary in this little shrine to the Virgin Mary. In the second account, as he's fleeing his pursuers, he runs into the shrine and he has a vision of the Virgin Mary. In either account, he returned in 1623, less than a year later, and built the sanctuary that's there. The current chapel that's on the site there now was expanded about 200 years ago from the original chapel that Count Giosalo built. And that's our pass right up there, the low point where you can see the sky between the trees. Okay, we're at the very top now. His shrine and the apparition that he had of Mary became sort of a shrine for those who are traveling. Beginning around 1900, cyclists started using the shrine as a place to stop. 
They would stop at the top and then have a moment of reflection or worship or giving thanks within this small shrine. After World War I, the local priest assigned to this church of Father Irma Lindo was a devoted follower and patron of the Gelasio Shrine, and he wanted this to become canonized. So he actually got Fausto Capi and Gino Bartali, two legends of Italian bicycle racing, to take a petition to the Pope in Rome to have this shrine recognized. Now through his zeal, persistence, and shrewd public relations, he actually got Pope Pius XII to issue a papal bull recognizing this particular church. And to mark the occasion, they had a relay of cyclists from Rome carrying a torch with a flame from Rome back to this church. And that flame still burns in the center of this church to this day. And so this particular church became recognized as a shrine for cyclists. And the Madonna del Gisalo is recognized as the patron saint for bicyclists. Inside the church, you have all this memorabilia from bicycle racers and history that decorate the inside of the church. And in fact, so much was donated from some very, very wealthy individuals that they built a museum next to the church dedicated to the history of bicycle racing. And it doesn't just cover bicycle racing, but people who ride for everyday use, transportation, commuters, and people involved in the industry as well. When the museum was finished in 2006, the Pope commissioned a stone from Rome to be taken and placed at the very center of the museum. And it's inscribed with Omnia Vincit Amor, love conquers all. I think we can safely say that this small church in Italy is perhaps the holiest place in the world for bicyclists. Preparing this video hit me in a couple ways. First, the sanctuary of Shisalo really tangibly in a very embodied way connects our faith and what we do every day. Our cycling, our exercise, our bodies, and our bicycles with our faith. It connects our need for safety, whether we're riding the mountains or our road, to our faith as well, to trust God for safety on the roads. Third, by having the church at the very top of the climb there, it gives you a place to stop after you've done the climb. So instead of just having a drink of water and a power bar, you have a place where you can reflect upon your faith and your experiences as a human being within this world and your connection to God as well. Word is getting out. Trinity Episcopal Church in St. Louis just recently instituted one Sunday a year where they bless bicyclists and their bicycles as a way to keep them safe and bring their faith with their activities together. Well, I hope my little detour into the sanctuary, the Madonna del Gisalo, has been encouraging for you and you found it stimulating. I've got a really long downhill now, which I'm really going to enjoy after working to get up here. Until next week, I shall leave you with the word of peace. Before I head down, I wanted to show you that our little pass here, where we could probably use a little shrine someday, was actually built in the, during the Great Depression with the Civilian Works Corps.